Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael. And after almost six weeks, my Victorian poor law building is almost complete. Let's take a look at all of the little bits I've added to this building in Adding Detail to Buildings. It was time to cover up the gaping hole in the building. I needed to add this elegantly curving bow window. It doesn't come out far, but it has a gentle curve to it that would be fun to make. I drew the outlines in Inkscape and stuck them onto half millimetre card. I cut two of them so that they would glue together to be one millimetre thick. This is a good way to get gentle curves in thick card without it creasing. I scored a series of parallel lines down the pieces. The scored lines make it really easy to bend the card. Now for the curve. I printed a piece of the right shape onto sticky label. Once cut with my scalpel, these things were tiny and very fiddly. Bent card wants to spring back to its flat shape, so I decided that super glue was the way to go with this one. I applied it with an off cut of card, and then dropped the curved bit of card into place. It took a bit of to and fro with the glue, but it stuck into shape eventually. Once the curve was there, I dropped the second layer into place. I cut a series of further curves in ever smaller sizes, and then carefully glued these into a stack using PVA glue. The resulting stepped shape is just right for the stonework that supports the board wall. I used PVA to glue the scale scene's ashlar texture onto the curved part. It's best to add texture onto the ready curved surface, rather than trying to bend the card and texture as one complete part. Once the window openings were cut and wrapped, I thought that I was onto a winner with this component. I used the sticky label method to add some windows using some waste acetate, and then glued it into place with PVA. I painted the curved stack of card a stone colour and stuck it into place under the windows. It's time to embed the building into its landscape. Market Street runs from the Hockings building on the right, right down to the High Street on the left. Getting this hill to look right, even though it's hidden by the viaduct, was important to me. I started by measuring how long the hill is, and how high it ascends. So this gives me a hill that rises 38mm in 352mm. That's quite steep, 1 in 9.3, or just under 11%. It's steep, but not unrealistic. I don't think you ever really see a hill that goes from level to 11% in one sudden jump. So I used Inkscape to introduce a gentle S-curve to make the transitions a bit more realistic looking. This had the benefit of lining up the ground with the two doorways, here and here. I printed this shape along with supporting ribs onto sticky labels, which I then stuck to 1mm card. This gave me a kit of parts, which I stuck together into a very pleasing looking skeleton. The first time I saw this, I was taken by the sudden transformation of this flat building. With the building supported by a heavy book, I used PVA glue to stick the skeleton to the building. It fits! <laughs> and it looks brilliant! I used a couple of offcuts of card and lined them up with the brickwork on the forced perspective part. I cut this weird shape for the forced perspective bit. Not much will ever be seen, so I need to make a slot for the next building up the hill. This should slot on here just right. The skeleton was bending away from the building a little bit. I couldn't think of a way to brace it whilst the glue dried, so I used Uhu glue on the ribs. This dries quickly, so should hold everything into place naturally. I made sure it was all well covered, then just dropped the surface, covered in scale scenes tarmac texture, into place. I used a couple of clamps at the bottom to hold the curve in the right position. I used Inkscape to create some very simple downspouts. These are just light grey rectangles with a few stripes to suggest joins in the pipework. Printed out, these look quite nice. I covered the edge of a bit of Weetabix box with PVA, and then folded the rectangle around the edge. Using gentle strokes, I then cut off about three quarters of a millimetre along the folded edge. This leaves a very convincing looking downspout. I drew a line of PVA using my ruler on the face of the building, and then carefully added the downspout into the line of glue. This looks good! I also have a few narrower pipes to add. For these, I took a bit of the downspout texture and just folded it in half. I cut off a strip that was about half a millimetre wide. Use many light strokes if you're going to do this. If you use one heavy stroke, the resulting pipe curls up like a pig's tail. 
I took the tiny slice of paper and added it to the building. This is really starting to look good. I made an L-shaped bracket and covered it in the dressed stone texture. This drops onto the side of the building like this. I stuck strips of stone texture in various widths to a bit of Weetabix box. When cut out and stuck to the face of the building, the difference is astonishing. We now have a much more solid looking three dimensional building. I used a scrap of sticky label backing to make blinds, covered the gaps in black tape. This makes simple and convincing looking windows. I added a little wall around the cellar window reveal. I added scale scenes doors. And a bit of boarded up window just for fun. I added a few bits of weeds here and there. A street name and a simply drawn Scott alarm finished it off. Finally, I brushed on some AK Interactive Matte Varnish to protect the printed surface. And then I used Humbrol Weathering Powder and just very, very gently brushed it onto the building here and there. I think that this looks great. I'm really pleased with how this building has turned out. I shared updates on this part of the building in my weekly member update video last week. Hello to new Chandwell business owner member, Don. If you'd like to join Don and see behind the scenes updates, please consider joining my channel as a member. You can use this button here. Here's a look at my original inspiration for this building. Join me next week for something a little bit different, a break from all the buildings. Until then, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.